Who's out there? That's you, Mr. Dennison? Hello, Ernie. How you been? <laughs> fine. Just fine, sir. You have any trouble getting in? No problems. Well, you got to be careful, you know. Some of those junkies and winos from Broadway, they try to bed down in the lobby overnight. Encourage them, Ernie. The theater was meant for the common man. <laughs> Anything I can get for you, sir? Just some food. I'm expecting a few people. You mind going across the street for coffee and Danish and get something for yourself? What do you have in a rehearsal? Hmm. Only a reading. I'm working on a new play. Well, that's where it all starts, right? With the words. Yep. With the words. Oh, uh, Mr. Dennison. I didn't get to talk to you at the funeral. I just wanted to tell you how sorry I was. That's very kind of you, Ernie. Seems like such a long time ago. Well, it was only about a year, wasn't it? A year this week. I'll, I'll be right back to those sweet rolls. with amnesia. I never get this way when I'm making a film. Darling, I've told you, movies are for children. The theater's a whole different animal. Yeah, as long as it doesn't bite. Oh, Alex, I want to be good. I want to make you proud of me. You will. Well, at least we don't have to keep this a secret anymore. You saw this? Heard about it. Cat out of the bag department. Actress Monica Wells, playwright Alex Dennison. 
have a major announcement to make tonight. The couple began their hush-hush love affair during the rehearsals of the Broadway comedy, Chamber Music, and head or flop, they plan to marry tomorrow in a quiet civil ceremony. Congratulations, fellas. Sorry to spoil the surprise. She has a certain way with words, hasn't she? I'll wring her neck. How did she know? Well, we took out a license, and we got ourselves a judge, and somebody had a big mouth. If ever I run into her... Oh, you'll be perfectly charming. Gossip's gossip. That's their job. Half hour, Miss Wells. Oh, my makeup's not finished and my hair's a mess. Now get out of here before you break into hives. Alex, I'm scared to death. If it helps, I love you. It does. All right. No more butterflies. I'm going to be wonderful. I never doubted it. It's a foolish question. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a lot of power. I mean, people in the theater, they do pretty much what you say. Isn't that right? Oh, so I keep telling them. You're not asking me to bribe the critics. Uh, no, nothing like that. But I, I suppose you could stop somebody working if you wanted to. I suppose if I was vindictive, instead of being the tender-hearted creature you've come to adore. Hey, what is all this? Look at, the, look at the time. Come on. Get out of here. Come on. I've got to pull myself together. Love you. Break a leg. Alex, I found a blast off. How's Molly? Traditional response. She's terrified. I just talked to our leading man. He's making room on his shelf for a Tony. Good. Let him keep on thinking he's the star. I just hope we all do justice to the words. Boy, it's a nice little commercial comedy. Nothing cosmic. If it's a hit, fine. If not, we'll survive. Either way, I'm grateful for the directing shop. Don't go modeling on me. You did a good job. Where are you going to watch? The back of the house, the wings? Watch. You've got to be kidding. That's cruel and unusual punishment. Well, that's another one for you, Mr. D. Hey, I must owe you three drinks by now, huh? Five. I should be saving my luck for the critics. Uh, you're going to have another hit. We Irish are psychic. Believe me, it's going to be a smash. Damon, you're superstitious, you're irrational, and if you're right, I won't tell the sanitation department about your kitchen. <laughs> hey. <clears throat> How can you just sit here when your baby is being delivered across the street? What do you want me to do, Walter? Pace the aisle? Reacquaint myself with my dinner? Believe me, on opening night, the best place to be is a saloon. Why do you let him in here? The man is obviously bereft of human emotion. Would you like a drink, Mr. Lamb? No. Well, yes. Something out of a bottle with a skull and crossbones on it. <laughs> Can you believe this? I have 600,000 riding on this man's show, and he sits here tossing dice. It's therapy, Walter. You ought to try it. Well, thanks. I'm taking enough of a gamble tonight. Speaking of gambling, what is this I read about you and Monica? Is it true? Would the newspapers lie? Amazing. I've been to every rehearsal, and I didn't know you two were even, uh, what's the word? Keeping company. <laughs> no, we were discreet. We didn't want to upset any apple carts. Well, skull. So it's about time you became a domestic animal. <clears throat> Damon, is that the right time? Right on the button, Estelle, right on the button. The curtain comes down in 10 minutes. Let's go. Thanks for the drink. You coming? In due time. Well, what do you say, Damon? Double or nothing? Sure. Oops. Nice of you to drop by. Where's the lighting man tonight? In Yonkers? Now he claps. Brother! Yes, okay. <laughs> 
Disappear if the notices are negative. But we're going to be a hit. The audience loved it. You're new to the theater, Karen. Lesson one never confuse the audience with the critics. Alice. Go ahead, Mr. Lamb. They're still standing by that phone in there. They haven't even eaten yet. The Death Watch. It's better on an empty stomach. Clamoring for you. Oh, well, um, give me a minute. I'm girding my loins. Well, they look fine to me. <laughs> Actors do strange things after an opening. But counting money. I got this from the bank today. I mean, would you believe with all the excitement I just ran out of cash? Here, darling, can you put it over there for me? I don't want to leave it lying around. Ooh. Signs and portents. Yeah. Let's hope it's not an omen. <laughs> What's all this? There's still a few things you don't know about me. That's my junk heap. This? Monocle. Doesn't everyone have one? And? Girl Scout knife. <laughs> oh, no, that's a necessity. I got that this morning. You know, there was a power failure last night. 20 minutes without lights. Living with you is going to be an adventure. Which reminds me. Mm. Where do we collapse tonight? In Shakespeare's immortal words, your place or mine. Well, Alex, if it's all the same to you, I'd rather stay here tonight. I mean, by myself. Oh? Well, it's been so hectic, you know. I need to be alone just for a few hours. Do you mind? Yes. I'll make it up to you, I promise. Oh, that's a good start. But if we don't stop, we'll never get downstairs. <laughs> Drink up. Now. <clears throat> let's show them what a star looks like. Oh, Where's Monica? Nice of her to throw this party, but at least she can put in an appearance. I guess she wants to make an entrance. <laughs> it's obviously is a little overdue, isn't it? Maybe we can use the second paragraph. No, I don't want to hear that again. I'll talk to you later. Several drinks. I suggest you do the same. It's that bad, huh? Well, bad is a relative term. They were mixed. But the Times was a knock, and without the Times. I'm sorry, Alex. What did they say about Monica? They, uh, they, they liked her. I mean, nothing ecstatic. The Post thought she was a little stiff. I don't want her to see that one. Can we try for a run? Monica's name means something. So does yours, Alex. Up to the producer. Walter. Yeah, yeah, I'll sleep on it. I'll go into the office tomorrow and assess the damage. If we could just stay open for a few weeks, get, get some word of mouth going. Come on, Walter, please. We'll see. It's starting to rain. It's appropriate, isn't it? <laughs> Night. Good night, darling. Oh, boy, isn't rain supposed to be good luck? Yeah, three hours too late. Oh. Huh? Well, you were right. I never saw people leave a party so quickly. Departing the sinking ship. How are you? Bearing up? I don't know. It hasn't oh, hit me yet. Mm -hmm. Night. Bye, Alex. Listen, I don't care about the reviews. It's a terrific play. Thank you. Thank I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Night, all.
It's what I'd laugh in the call a wet night. Can't you get a cab? There's one parked across the street. But naturally, the idiot's got his off-duty sign on. That's what I love about New York. Alex, does Monica have an umbrella? Already gave it to somebody. Wonderful. Broadway's favorite actor gets pneumonia. Oh, well, after those notices, I suppose I could use a cold shower. Don't be depressed then, Alex. You've got worse things coming, like marriage. You're amazing. I've had a few hits, so I can be philosophical. Yeah. But it's your first time out. You're being very British. Well, I wanted a success, but I care more about the playwright than the play. Are you sure you want me to leave? No, I don't want you to leave. Mm. But I want you to leave. <laughs> <laughs> An actress has to prepare herself. And so does a wife. So I'm going to make myself a cup of tea, and then I'm going to bed. All right. Mm -hmm. I'll call you first thing in the morning. Alex, you do love me. Very much. Why? Oh, I was such an idiot last week. You were angry. Not much of an excuse. Missing a performance and stranding everybody. And that isn't even the worst part. Monica? Is something wrong? Not if you love me. Get some rest. You know what time it is? I thought you wanted to be alone. Hello? Monica? Wells, Monica. That's right. No, 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 she was dead when we got here. Well, uh, as far as we can tell, it looks like a suicide. Yeah, well, we found her on the sidewalk in front of a townhouse. Looks like she jumped from a bedroom window. Mm-hmm. Better take it, sir. You've had quite a shock. No. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, no, we're here with a fiancé now. Apparently, she called him. Yeah. Uh -huh. She always made herself a cup of tea before she went to bed. Mm. Yeah. Better not touch it, sir. Well, so Maybe uh, we should go into the living room. No, no, it was at 9 11. No, no, it was some neighbor, some old guy woke up his dog. Oh. Party! And uh, you were here? Yes. How was she when you left her? What? I was just wondering if she was depressed. She wasn't depressed. I guess you were the last one to see her alive. Catering people were here after I left. They were cleaning up. <laughs> Didn't do a very good job. What? Uh, you let us in, so you must have a key. Does uh, anyone else have one? That is, uh, besides the deceased. I don't know. 
Mead, probably. Hey, Jim. Yeah. Jim, the lieutenant's on the phone. He wants to talk to you. Excuse me. And, uh, sir, don't touch anything, okay? Good, Ernie. Thanks. Uh, anything else you need? No. As a matter of fact, why don't you take the rest of the day off? Really? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I don't know. Not, if anything should go wrong here, I... Like what? <laughs> Plague? Pestilence? Well, trust me. If I smell smoke, I'll send for the Marines. Yeah, but I... Go home. Open a beer. Soak your feet. I'll take full responsibility. Somebody out there? Ernie. Leave your number on the bulletin board, and I'll call you to lock up. All right. Who's there? Me. When they get here, stay in the shadows. I don't want them to see you from the stage. If anybody tries to leave, I'll come down and talk to them. Fine. It's essential they stay here, all of them. If even one of them walks out, it won't work. It may not work anyway. You still think this is a mistake, don't you? Like I said before, Mr. Dennison, this is your show. I'm just here to watch. Alex? Karen, my love. Come here and let me get a good look at you. My wonderful Alex. Oh, it's been too long. I want you to know I got up at the crack of noon today, just for you. You've changed. Much more provocative. New image. It was time to bury the ingenue. Is it working? I'll know in a week. I'm up for the lead in a new play. It's between me and one other girl. Good luck. I'll steal one of her pictures and stick pins in it. Oh. <laughs> well, why not? After all, you always said I was ambitious. Oh, so I did. Let me get you a cup of coffee. How's Leo? Fine, I suppose. I haven't seen him for a while. Oh, I thought you two were an item. Things change. Well, he'll be here today if that's going to be a problem. No. We're not enemies or anything. 
Alex, uh, what's all this about? When you called, you mentioned a new play. Hello? Anybody home? Who's that? Tweedledum and Tweedledee bumped into each other outside. The difference is that Walter came in a limo and I had to take a bus. Is that Karen? Hello, Mr. Lamb. How are you? Hi, Lloyd. Hi. What is this? Remembrance of things past. Reunions are good for the soul. Come on up. Oh, I really hate this place. Too many memories. It's only because of my affection for you, Alex, that I even stepped foot in it. Noted and appreciated. It's been a long time. How have you been? Writing, I hope. Oh, off and on. Mostly on. These scripts I see? Uh, 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 mustn't touch, Lloyd. I have to wait for the rest of the cast. Cast? Ah, he's being mysterious. Well, it's the playwright's prerogative, and it's the uh, producer's prerogative to have a sweet roll. <laughs> Oh, what an odd sound. Somebody calling an empty theater. I'll get it. Why don't you two have something to eat? Hello? Yes, speaking. No, that's all right. Good. Well, how soon can they get here? All right, thanks. Tell him to park the truck by the stage door. Yeah, that's right. All right. All right, thanks again. Goodbye. Ernie, I thought you went home. I don't feel right about leaving, Mr. Dennison. I mean, it's my job to look after this place. It isn't necessary. I won't get in anybody's way. Ernie, I don't want you here. Is that understood? But I... Go home. You're not needed. Okay. Whatever you say. Ernie, I'm sorry. I don't know what's the matter with me today. Here. For your trouble. Well, thank you. That's, a, that's very nice of you, sir. Now, don't forget to leave your number, and I'll call you when we're finished, all right? Thank you, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> You see, this is why I became an actor. When I enter a room, I seem to command immediate attention. Hello, Leo. Welcome. To what? Now, that's a good question. I know. It's all a plan to get me and Karen back together. Don't be ridiculous. Well, nobody told me you were going to be here. Does that mean you wouldn't have come? Hey, Alex says he wants me here. That's good enough for me. You're being obsequious, Leo. Okay, I'll stop if you tell me what it means. See you, Leo. Alex, whatever you had in mind, shouldn't we get started? Still one more to come, right? And unless I miss my guess, it's... Sorry I'm late. Someone left a car in the middle of 46th Street and just went home. Speak of the devil. Lord, it's a rogues gallery up there. Are we having a class reunion? Alex, good to see you again. Good to see you too, dear boy. Walter Astrid. Oh. Do we want that together? Don't point, David. Yes. Get yourself some coffee and uh, we'll begin. I will indeed. The rest of you take seats. Oh, Just make yourself you interacting lately, Lloyd. <laughs> Leo, old friend. Didn't you once tell me that you went to medical school? You mean before I went wrong and became an actor? Yeah, why? Because I am the king of all hangovers. What do you prescribe? Just dehydrated. Have some water. Only if it's a good year. Right. Uh, do you two want to join the party? We're late. Alex, you have the floor. I want to thank you all for coming. I'm very grateful. I know I haven't been in touch during the past year, but I'm sure you'll understand it was a difficult time for me. Where were you keeping yourself? I tried calling. I rented a house in the woods, took the phone off the hook, and brooded. For six months, I never even looked at a typewriter. The problem, of course, was guilt. Guilt because I'd failed all of you, but guilt mostly over Monica's death. Alex, it wasn't your fault. She was depending on me to give her a success. She needed one. And when it didn't happen, she went into a depression. 
Look, Alex, we all feel a little guilty. But there was no way to predict a reaction like that. It was so extreme. Well, anyway, that's over and done with. The point is that I finally started a new play. Oh, Trump. Oh, oh, no. oh, it's just bits and pieces, but it's taking shape. That's why we're here. I want to try it out, see how it looks on its feet. And naturally, I want your input. Why not? Oh, let's say, to make amends. I've written parts for several of you. Oh, well, that's interesting. Lloyd, I'd like you to direct. Great. Walter, you get first option. Oh, assuming you'll like it, of course. Of course I'll like of it. Of course you like it. <laughs> Well, I've rented the theater for the afternoon, so why don't we read some of the scenes, talk them over, and see what we've got. Oh, and by the way, it's something new for me. A mystery. Good. Wow. They do well. Unusual form, a mystery. You take the audience by the hand, and you lead them in the wrong direction. They trust you, and you betray them. All in the name of surprise. Sort of turns us into chess pieces, isn't it? That bothers you, David? Well, in a way, all those characters are cardboard. I like, uh, I like roles with flesh and blood. Well, I don't know about the flesh, David. But I can guarantee you the blood. What's they called? Killing Jessica. I like it. Who's playing Jessica? Since I seem to be the only woman here. Oh, no, sorry to disappoint you, Karen. But you're playing somebody else. Oh. No, no, don't worry. It's a good part. You'll have fun with it. Alex, you said those aren't full scripts. Mm -hmm. I said bits and pieces. That's why I need your help. Well, can you give us an overview? Well, it's a play about another play. One that's in rehearsal. And Jessica? Jessica is the star. A rather complex character. She's made several films, mostly fluff. And she was embarrassed by them. So she just walked away. She hibernated, traveled. Finally, she decided to take a chance in the theater. She got the leading role in a Broadway production, moved to New York, and committed herself to a new career. She sounds very familiar. Does she? Well, I always start from what I know. Alex, this character, Jessica, if we can believe your title, someone kills her? Oh, yes. Well, it's made to look like something else. But it's murder. David, would you mind reading a scene? Why not? You're the leading man. Handsome, attractive to women. Side casting. Yeah. Now, this takes place at the beginning of the third scene. The setting is your apartment. Am I married? Oh, many times but not currently. You've invited Jessica to your apartment for a private rehearsal. You've told her that it's common practice in the theater. And she believed me? She must have, because she comes. If Karen isn't going to play the part, who do I read with? Me, I'm afraid. You? You're in the imagination business, David. Give it a try. If it helps, try to picture, oh, Monica playing the role. Monica? Actually, that's not a bad idea. Just pretend I'm Monica. But, uh... uh let's get started. At the curtain, the doorbell rings. You're off stage. It rings again. You enter. Coming. You reach the door. And you open it. Am I early or late? Right on time. Come in. Sorry about not doing this at your place, but I'm a bit under the weather. Oh, well, you'd rather wait. No, no, no. It's too important. We have to protect ourselves. Well, I hope you're exaggerating. My dear, the director isn't up there with egg on his face. We are. And when something isn't working... Oh, like Act 2, Scene 1. Among other pitfalls, it's up to us to provide corrective surgery. Shouldn't we have told him we're rehearsing? Why? He 
the problem, not the cure. It hasn't helped me much with my blocking. I keep getting tangled up in the furniture. We'll work it out. We shall have tomorrow. Please sit down. Drink? Uh, no, thanks. Ah, I'm having such trouble with some of these transitions. You're very involved in this. I guess I'm a bit too intense. Not at all. You know, the genuine sense of dedication is refreshing. <laughs> Thank you. That's why I'm glad we had this chance to get to know each other better. Strangely enough, it can help the performance. I suppose that's why so many leading men and leading ladies try to establish a very close rapport. What do you think? I think we should work on the scene, really. It's plenty of time. Please, we're supposed to be rehearsing. Oh. Oh. This was a bad idea. I think I'd better leave. Why all of us? It's perfectly natural. We work together every day. We play love scenes. Let go of me. Let go. Let go! What the hell was that for? You just leave me alone. Listen, lady, slaps in the face went out with a bustle. Who do you think you are? Will you get out of my way, please? You agreed to come here. All right. I didn't force you. Maybe I was naive. I thought we were actually going to rehearse. Now, may I go home? I don't like to be turned down. Maybe there's something you should know. When I'm attracted to a man, I don't need an invitation. You don't attract me, as far as I know. You don't attract anyone. In fact, rumor has it that if I were to say yes, you wouldn't know what to do. All right, now we're even. Hope you feel better. Good night. Alex, I'm sorry, I just don't like it. Why is that, David? Well, the man's totally unsympathetic. He's got no sophistication, no technique. Now, if I was going to seduce one of my leading ladies, I'd... Uh... Yes? I certainly wouldn't come on like that. Well, how would you come on? Privileged information. No, I'm serious. Now, let's say, just for the sake of argument, that you wanted to seduce, well, I don't know, Monica. Monica? Why do you keep mentioning her? She was one of your leading ladies, and you do have a certain reputation. What is this, Alex? Monica and I were friends, co-workers. Rehearsals can be an intimate process. I got the impression you were attracted to her. You were wrong. If you say so. But it's academic anyway, isn't it? We were talking about the scene. And I thought you were excellent, David. <laughs> Very convincing. Any comments? Don't be shy. Question. Yeah? What are you going for? What's the point of the scene? Well, the point, Lloyd, is that in a mystery, everyone must have a motive. You mean he uh, kills her because she turns him down? I didn't say he was the culprit, Leo. But vanity can be a powerful force. You don't commit a murder because someone won't go to bed with you. No. But people had no trouble believing Monica took her life just because she was in a flop. That was different. Yes, of course it was. Forgive me. Walter's right. There are too many memories in this place. Let's go on to the next scene. It takes place on the afternoon of Jessica's opening night. She's in an art gallery. Another set? This is getting expensive. It's all in the lighting, Walter. Lloyd, would you mind reading this next scene with me? Well, why not Leo? No, I'm saving him for his own scene. Do you mind? Well, it comes very close to the top of the show. Okay. Who do I play? A director. More typecasting? No, it helps give me a fix on the characters. Now, I'll read Monica again. Did I say Monica? Excuse me. I meant Jessica. Oh, here, you'll need this. What? A prop. A Madison Avenue art gallery. Jessica's come more or less as an escape. She needs a few moments of solitude before the rigors of an opening night. She's completely unaware that someone has entered the gallery. Not my taste. You startled me. Next time I'll clear my throat. Is this true? 
You mean the gossip column? That's exactly what I mean. Is it true? Yes. Congratulations. Things are looking up. The actress marries the playwright, and they live happily ever after, with him writing star vehicles for her, of course. That's a hostile thing to say. I'm in a hostile mood. It comes from the impression that the actress had an understanding with the director. Oh, really? What kind of an understanding was that? Promises of things to come. All the sidelong glances, the body language, the request for help with your part. Correct me if I'm wrong. Isn't that standard procedure? Not the way you did it. And it served its purpose. Special attention from the director. Tender, loving care. I think that's enough. Miles, listen to me. You and I really never had a go at it. Why don't we at least give it a try? You're serious. I, I could be. Why on earth would I tie myself down to someone like you? No talent, no money, no future. What's in it for me? Wait a minute, Alex. You've got a major contradiction here. In what way? Well, look at her character. In one scene, she's trusting and innocent, and here she's cold as ice. The many faces of Jessica. Besides, maybe that's just the way he sees her. It's not clear. Did she use him or didn't she? Well, the important thing is that he thinks she did. At least it's a better motive than he gave to my character. I don't agree. All right, Lloyd. When in doubt, touch base with reality. Let's take the case of you and Monica. What case? You were concentrating on her, giving her extra attention. She needed it. It was her first time on stage. Granted. But there was talk that you were going above and beyond the call of duty. That's not true. But suppose it was. Suppose you misinterpreted her professional needs for something more personal. And then suddenly to discover that she's going to marry another man. Alex, what are you getting at? I beg your pardon? Are we talking about the scene or are we talking about Monica? Good question. <clears throat> Alex, we've known each other for a long time, so I'm entitled to be blunt. Why are we here? You know why, Walter, to read my new play. It's not a play. It's just a bunch of unrelated scenes, all of them uncomfortably close to the truth. The hell they are. She never came to my apartment. Who, David? Jessica or Monica? There isn't any Jessica. And as for Monica, yes. all we had was a professional relationship. Just like Lloyd's. Well, I don't know anything about that. I just speak for myself. Are you suggesting that Monica and I have some kind of thing behind our Hold it, hold it. Now, we're all friends here. I'm not so sure. Will somebody please tell me what's going on? My sentiment's exactly. Alex, you owe us an explanation. Now, if not, I'll be on my way. Well? As you wish, Walter. Sit down and finish your coffee. All of you, sit down. Well, the truth, if you really want it, is that I am working on a new play, a murder mystery. Five suspects and an unknown killer. I hope it's me. Makes for a better part. Shut up, Leo. Why well, are things changed? A year ago, you two were roommates. None of your business. But it is mine. As a matter of fact, I've got a scene about that. You do? Alex, you're digressing. Clever of you to notice, Walter. Always business. That's what your scene's about, by the way. But you're right. Might as well get to the point. Well, it's really very simple. When we finish here, we'll know something that we didn't know before. And what's that? Which one of you killed Monica Wells? <laughs> talking about Monica wasn't murdered she committed suicide and to suggest that one of us is involved it isn't a it... suggestion it's a statement of fact they investigated the police the police they... were wrong Alex we all know you suffered a terrible loss we understand your grief but what you're doing here it, it won't change anything it won't bring her back 
Then you've nothing to lose by indulging me. I'll tell you what we've got to lose, our privacy. I'm sorry, Alex, but if you're going to be making accusations and digging into our personal lives, I'd rather be somewhere else. Karen, all I'm asking... I know what you're asking. At least I think I do, and I'm sorry. I just don't like it. Well, I suppose that's it. Class dismissed. <gasps> Excuse me, Miss Daniels, but shouldn't you reconsider? Who are you? We met last year after the suicide of Miss Wells. I took a statement from you. Karen? You remember Lieutenant McElroy? McElroy? Yeah. He was the investigating officer. I spoke to him myself. What's he doing here? I asked him to come. Uh, Karen, would you do me a favor, please? Would you come back on stage? Uh, you too, Lieutenant. I'd very much like to get to the bottom of this. If you wouldn't mind, it might be helpful then. Care to explain all this? Lieutenant, Mr. Lamb requires an explanation. Well, not much to explain, sir. Mr. Dennison called, asked me to be here today. Said he had some new information pertaining to the death of Monica Wells. Well, now, a moment ago you said suicide, not death. Yes, it was suicide. That's my view and the official determination of the medical examiner. Then the case is closed. Why are we wasting our time? Because the lieutenant's willing to give me a hearing? It's an admirable trait, don't you think? I'll tell you what's not so admirable. We didn't know he was here. Well, Mr. Dennison asked me to keep out of sight. Thought it might um, inhibit you. I wonder why. He agreed to intervene if any of you tried to leave. But you can't keep us here against our will. Uh, no, ma'am, I can't. This is strictly unofficial. You're perfectly free to go. But I would have to wonder why you'd be so anxious to leave. Uh, so we're back to what have we got to lose? Hmm? Frankly, I think Mr. Dennison is on a wild goose chase. I've told him that, but I'm willing to keep an open mind. It's up to you, Karen. Where's my scene? Welcome back. But if you don't mind, Walter goes next. Walter? I'm not an actor, Alex. All producers are actors. Now, you just sit in this chair. Come on, Walter. It's a simple phone call. Back to it, back. producer of a play that's just opened to mixed reviews. The opening night party is over in your home. The man on the other end of the line is your accountant. It's all yours, Walter. Hello, Harry. This is, uh, what name shall I use? What's the matter with your own? This is Walter Lamb. Sorry to drag you out of bed, but I assume you've heard, hmm? Yes, well, the uh, patient isn't terminal, but the vital signs are fading fast. Harry, I know the uh, paperwork is at your office, but do you remember offhand the uh, insurance situation? No, uh, specifically the non-appearance clause. I'm not sure I like this, Alex. What's the problem? It's only a play. Harry, I was wondering about the amount of coverage. No, no particular reason. Just give me a ballpark figure. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes, that's what I thought. All right, Harry. Thank you. Go back to sleep. You satisfied? Yes, Walter. Very realistic. Well, I guess I'm a little slow, but I have the foggiest idea what that was about. Yes, well, let me enlighten you. What Alice was trying to say is that I was the sole investor in chamber music. So? So Walter stood to lose a small fortune, unless... Unless, like the uh, producer in this scene, 
I was covered by insurance. So if I kept the show open and one of the actors failed to appear... The leading lady, for example. Then I would collect the insurance money. Is that your drift, Alex? Only if you had that kind of coverage. Yes, well, you know it's standard, so that I did. Then Monica's death came at a very convenient time for you. The woman killed herself. Do you understand? Whether you want to believe it or not, she was depressed and she jumped out of her bedroom window. How can you be so certain, Walter? Were you there? Excuse me. I'm looking for Mr. Uh, Dennison, Alex Dennison. Right here. Santoro moving in storage. You got your uh, shipment. Where's your truck? Right outside. You want us to unload? Oh, in a minute. Excuse me. I want to check a bill of lading. And by now, you all deserve an intermission. What's this, moving day? They're bringing in a set for the last scene. What kind of set? Permit me my element of surprise, Lloyd. In a mystery, the audience should never know what's coming next. I'll be right back. Now what? Well, apparently, we just wait. The puppets without the puppeteer. If we had any sense, we'd go home. And that doesn't mean we're guilty of anything. Easy, Karen. Well, I don't like it. I mean, what is wrong with him? A year ago, even at the funeral, he was fine. But now... A year's a long time. He's obsessed. No, no. There's a method to all this. He knows what he's doing. That's a charitable interpretation. He certainly raked you over the coals. Well, that makes two of us. Three? Great. Marvelous. Wonderful. We're next. What could he accuse me of? Monica and I were friends. Well, he'll think of something. If you're both so worried, read the play. What? Your scenes, they should be about somewhere. Forewarned is forearmed. That's right, we can check the pages and see what he's up to. Lloyd. Lloyd. No, nothing with your names on it? No, David. Let me see. David. Try the attaching case. Maybe, maybe, maybe we're not going to do anything. Then why did he invite us? Take my word for it. You won't be overlooked. The papers are probably hidden. What do you mean? Well, he knew he'd be interrupted. He didn't want to give you an advantage. It's all part of keeping us all off balance. He may be obsessed, David, but he's thorough. Very thorough. Somehow that doesn't comfort me. Did you check the load yourself? Yes, sir, it's all right here. How long will it take you to set up on stage? Half an hour. Oh, make it sooner. Like I said, 15 minutes. Do you have the floor plan for the arrangement? Oh, yeah. Is this it? I want every piece put in the position where it's marked. Understood? Sure. Switch on the stage light so you can see. And if you need us, we'll be downstairs. I, I thought you people always had your sets built. Your stuff's all real. Well, we're trying something new. Keeps the actors on their toes. Intermission over. I'm sorry to keep you waiting. Why don't we all go downstairs where we won't be distracted? I promise you we're almost finished. Surely you don't want to miss the ending. Well, I've had my turn in the dentist chair. Karen, Leo, why should you miss out on all the fun? Hard to play a scene that doesn't exist. Oh, were well, you looking for your pages? Right here. There's an interior compartment. I think they make these things for spies and smugglers. I should have told you. You could have rehearsed. Shall we? You said it was empty. It was.
Lieutenant, why are you going along with this nonsense? Is it nonsense, Mr. Matthews? You know it is. Well, the department likes to be cooperative. Particularly when a celebrity is involved. You're humoring him, aren't you? You said it, sir. I didn't. What's he getting at? Does he actually suspect one of us? We should catch up with the other, sir. I'll be right along. So who's the next victim, Alex? Me? Well, actually, Karen, I'd like you and Leah to play a scene together. You mean I have to share the spotlight? You should be used to that. Isn't she wonderful? Right between the shoulder blades. Oh, it's easy. There's no backbone to get in the way. Oh, come on, you do. Ten you'd ten like ten to. Ten I know you'd ten like ten to. Moment I come in. Yeah, Lieutenant, yeah. you sit here a minute, please? Come in a shut minute. up! Oh, you shut up! Now I get it. Don't you see what he's doing? Now that you mention it? No, no. Hamlet, act two, scene two. A play within a play to catch his father's killer. I have heard that guilty creatures sitting at a play have, by the very cunning of the scene, been struck so to the soul that presently they have proclaimed their malefactions. The play's the thing wherein I'll catch the conscience of the king. Right. That's all very interesting, but why isn't David here? The last time I saw him, he was upstairs. You think he went home? I need him here. He knows that. Now, if he walked up... David! David! Too fast. Maybe the guy went to the bathroom. Ah, there you are. Hey, David, I thought you bailed out. Who are you? I don't get it. You know who I am. I know who you say you are. Suppose you give me some identification. What's this all about? Whoever this man is, he's not Lieutenant McElroy. What? But I remember him. You only think you do. There's a resemblance, the age, the build, but I'm pretty good on faces. And our friend here is not the man who spoke to me after Monica's death. Are you sure? I've just called the police. Lieutenant Henry McElroy was killed in the line of duty six months ago. Now, unless you're a ghost, I think you'd better tell us who you are. <laughs> well, I tried. Karen. Gentlemen, may I introduce a fellow professional, Mr. Frank Heller. He's an actor? And a very good one. <laughs> Maybe not, Mr. Dennison. They nailed me. Nothing to do with your performance. Unfortunately, David has too good a memory. Are you saying Alex hired you to impersonate Lieutenant McElroy? Yes, sir. Why? Very simple, Walter. For my little psychodrama to work, I had to keep you all here. Well, given the nature of the situation, I knew someone would try to leave. So I needed, uh, what shall I call it, official leverage. Of course. We might walk out on you, but not a cop. That was the idea. And since Lieutenant McElroy was no longer among the living... And since a real police officer would never cooperate. Exactly. I decided to hire a look-alike. Oh, excuse me, David. An almost look-alike. Does he know how much trouble he's in? What do you mean? What kind of trouble? Impersonating a police officer is a felony. I said he was a police officer. He didn't. That's a technicality. If you're going to be angry, David, blame me. Mr. Heller was just following instructions. No, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, 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 uh, I want to know something here. How did, um... Well, how'd you get into this? <clears throat> well, you may not, uh, believe this, but... I went to an audition. An audition? Now, my agent said Alex Dennison was looking for an actor. Who am I to say no to that? Go on. Well, I went to this rehearsal hall, and there were about ten other guys there. 
We all looked the same. Mr. Dennison interviewed me, and that was that. Then about a week later, he called me back. Now there was only three guys. Finally, there was just me. Well, what happened when he told you what he wanted? I thought he was crazy. An accurate impression. Tell him the rest, Frank. Well, first I told him no. I mean, I never met Monica Wells, but like everybody else, I read in the paper that she committed suicide. But then he explained some things to me, told me why she was murdered and who murdered her. Did he not? And of course, he offered you money. Yes, sir. How much? Ten thousand dollars. <whistles> oh, for a one-day part, if I'd known that, it would have been plastic surgery. Okay, look, I admit, the money was important. I mean, you people know what it's like. Actors have to scramble for jobs. I've tended bar, I, I, I've been a hard hat. Even drove a cab for a while. It's not much of a life. So when this came along... You don't have to apologize, Frank. Anyway, no hard feelings, I hope. You won't be needing me now, so I guess I better be going. No, not quite yet. No one leaves until we're finished. How can you keep us here? You don't have a phony cop anymore. Okay, I pretty much had a belly full of this. We all have, Lloyd, but I suggest we put up with it a few more minutes. What? On one condition. That Alex tells us why he's so all fired positive that Monica was murdered. I think that's your cue, Alex. Frank, I'll need your help. What do you want me to do? Be Lieutenant McElroy again. Now, we've been over this. Give them the case for suicide. Well, for one thing, there's no signs of any forced entry into her townhouse. Correct. If she was killed by an intruder, how did he get in? And why wasn't anything stolen? The police found $1,000 in cash on the premises. A thief would have taken it. She knew her play was a flop. So she was despondent. She left a suicide note. Concrete proof of her intentions. After everybody left, she went upstairs, opened her bedroom window, and say it. She jumped. In the words of the medical examiner's report, fall from a height. Case closed. But not for you. Nobody commits suicide because of bad notices. It wasn't the notices. It was the end of a dream for her. Alex, you have to admit that sometimes she was, well, erratic. I mean, she walked out on a performance one night. I had to go on for it. Don't you remember? Oh, the police made quite a point of that. Monica Wells gets into an argument with the playwright just before a preview. She bolts from the theater, hails a cab, and goes home. She refuses to answer the phone, so we're forced to give a performance without her. She comes back to the theater in a few hours and apologizes. Obviously proof of an unsound mind. It's certainly proof of something. David, she was in love. She was struggling over whether or not to make a commitment. The tension was too much for her. We fought, she ran away, she came back. Unprofessional, yes, she admitted that. But it was not abnormal. Alex, I have listened very carefully. And I have heard nothing about murder. She called me that night. She asked me to come over. Is that the behavior of a suicide? Maybe it was a cry for help. Then why did the phone go dead in the middle of a sentence? Because she changed her mind and hung up. The woman was under stress. She wasn't rational. She was rational enough to make herself a cup of tea. I saw it on her desk in the study. Is that your evidence, a cup of tea? She was starting a new life. She had everything to live for. You saw her at the party. Was that a woman in despair? Nobody can get into someone else's mind, Alex. Not even people we care about. Who knows what she was thinking that night? I know. She was thinking about our future. Alex, Alex, don't you see? Monica did a terrible thing. She not only took her own life, but she rejected you. I mean, that's hard to accept. So you've come up with this fantasy about a murder. In a strange way, it's easier to live with. I take it that means you're not going to help. I just don't see what else we can do. Karen, Leo, would you play the last scene for me? Alex, Walter is right. We're all friends here, but we're not getting anywhere with this. Excuse me. Excuse me, Leo. Just a few pages. 
No, I'm sorry. Well, who'll share a ride with me uptown? Oh, well, you could drop me in 75th Street. Yeah. You know, I'd really like to drive We're in that area. Where do you think you're going? Alex. Alex. Oh, Alex. 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 Then no one will get hurt. David, don't. He's bluffing. I wouldn't count on it. Alex, that's just a prop, right? Or it's not loaded. You cooperate. Just put it down. Hmm? This is ridiculous. Probably. Karen, Leo, pick up those pages. Yes, sir. You expect us to act? That's exactly what I expect. The scene takes place in your dressing room, Karen. Get back there. It's opening night. Sit on the couch. Leo, you make your entrance in a couple of moments. Are you ready? No. But you'll try, won't you? I'll read Monica again. Now, the scene starts with a knock on the door. Yes. Monica! May I come in? Yes, of course. Oh, not in makeup yet. Oh. Oh, do my makeup for another hour or so. I just wanted to sit in here and soak up the atmosphere. And you're not quite sure which makeup to use, are you? Pardon? I mean, if I were to get sick at the last minute, you'd have to play my part for me again. Never even crossed my mind. <gasps> Nobody gets sick on opening night. No, I suppose not. I heard you were quite good when you went on for me last week. The audience was disappointed. I did my best, but there's no comparison. No, you're being modest. Well, it doesn't much matter, does it? I mean, you here. That seems to surprise you. Why would I be surprised? I brought your tea back. You know, a special blend of tea leaves that your grandmother whips up in her country kitchen? Didn't you like it? I mean, it really calms me down. Yeah, so you said. Take some before opening night. Wonderful for the nerves. Oh, it is. Yeah, maybe so. Not quite so good for the rest of the body. I don't know what you mean. Let me see if I can make myself perfectly clear. Since you practically forced that tea on me, and since your motives are so transparent, I took some to my doctor and had him send a sample to the lab. A lab? I heard a marvelous new word. Cyclophosphamide. It's an alkylating agent. That's an odd thing to find in your grandmother's recipe. Well, there must be some mistake. This causes dizziness and nausea. A few sips of this and I'd be home right now and you'd know which makeup to use. Monica, you weren't even willing to pay your dues, were you? Karen, I... Oh, didn't know you had company. Hi, Mark. Hi. This is private, Leo. No, come on in, Leo. The three of us will have a little talk. About what? Oh, pick a subject. Opening nights. Doing a favor for an intimate friend. What? Huh? We're going to medical school? You did go, didn't you, for a few years? I imagine you had courses in chemistry. Well, that was a long time ago. Why? What's this all about? She knows. That's right. Now that she had it analyzed. Oh, brother. Okay, look, we spiked your tea, but it wouldn't have harmed you. Just would have slowed you down for tonight. The question is, what are you going to do? I told you it was crazy. You wouldn't listen. Be quiet. Put Leo. people in jail for something Be like quiet. this. Be quiet. Excuse me, I, uh... Oh, uh, well, yes, that was a very good rehearsal, Karen, Leo. We'll do that scene again later. I'm sorry, Mr. Dennison, I didn't mean to interrupt. We're finished. Oh, thank you. Uh, I just need you to sign this for me. <coughs> Thanks. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll be back tomorrow to uh, pick up the stuff. Fine, thanks again. Alex, I hope you know that scene we just played was nothing but lies. You did bring her tea. She told me. It was a gift. There was nothing in it. I mean, what good would it do me? Walter would never open with an unknown. Would you, Walter? Or would you send everyone home at the last minute? The critics, the press? I wonder. Alex, use your head. Even if Karen was nuts, I'm not. I'd never help her with something like that. You were living with her then. You'd do anything she wanted. No way. Well... Shall we go upstairs and see the set? No, I don't oh, think it's a good Alex, idea. I have a great idea. 
Shall we go upstairs and see the set? The voice of reason. At least one of us is rational. Come on, let's get this out. Take it easy. I'm right behind you. You too, Leo. Come on. Another seduction scene, Alex? Well, as a matter of fact, it's the scene of the crime. Oh, Lord. What? I think I know what this is. This is Monica's bedroom, isn't it? Very good, Karen. But how did it... Her furniture was in storage. I had it brought here today in the interest of realism. Is this... The original? No. The police have that in their files. But everything else is exactly as it was. The bedclothes, contents of the drawers, even our champagne glasses. Oh, I wouldn't, David. Monica didn't smoke. There are no ashtrays. Lloyd, would you turn out the house lights, please? Oh, and Karen, that chair's out of position. Move it a little more center, would you? Up, up. Thank you, Leo. Well, now what? Alibis, Walter. I was wondering when you were going to get around to that. I've established that you all had motives. Like hell we have. But motives are nullified by a legitimate alibi. Then cross me off your list. I was in an after-hours bar drinking till 4 o'clock in the morning, and there must have been 20 witnesses. And I was with friends. We went back to my place after the party and commiserated. Walter? Fortunately for me, I went home with our company manager. I sat around with his wife and kids. Well, Karen, that leaves you and Leo. It's easy. As you keep reminding us, we were living together. We spent the night in Leo's apartment. Seems like everyone's accounted for. Then who was Monica planning to meet after the party? Who said she was meeting anyone? She sent me home, Lloyd. On the one night we should have been together. And she got rid of the caterers. Didn't even give them a chance to clean up. No, she was expecting someone. Maybe she wanted to be alone. Then why didn't she lock the front door? I don't understand. What do you mean? She didn't throw the bolt. I was able to let the police in with my key. You're saying she didn't want you to stay because someone was coming? It explains the circumstances, doesn't it? When I left, she let him in. Him? Or her. They had some kind of argument. She called me. He grabbed the phone and hung up. I think there was a struggle. She was struck and killed. Where did this happen? In the study. It's the only downstairs phone. Why not up here? The tea, Walter. She didn't bring it upstairs. We're back to that again. Maybe she forgot. She was upset. Won't wash, David. Not too upset to make a cup of tea, but too upset to drink it. And then, of course, she didn't turn off the downstairs lights. They were on when I came in. And the bedroom door was open. Meaning? Suicide is a private act. She'd called me. I might come over and stop her. She knew I had the key. First, throw the bolt on the front door. Then close and lock the bedroom door. But she didn't. She was never upstairs that night alive. So your imaginary murderer carries her upstairs and throws her out of the window. Why not? Instead of an unexplained corpse, he creates a suicide. And the note? He searches. 
finds a piece of stationery here. What about fingerprints? Uh huh. Takes the stationery, presses her fingers to it, rolls it in the typewriter. Her prints are on it. His aren't. Well, that's very ingenious, Alex. But even if you're right, even if somebody did kill her, it wasn't one of us. Unless you don't believe our alibis. Oh, on the contrary. I hired a firm of private detectives to check them out. Most of them held up. Most of them? Three of you were with multiple witnesses when Monica died. David, you were at a club. Lloyd with friends. And Walter with your company manager's family. But you and Leo, Karen, you two only alibi each other. We were together. We only have your word for that. What do you mean? There are five motives here, all hypothetical. But one of them is real. It's a matter of record. Read it. This is a laboratory report. Chemical analysis of a tea sample submitted by Monica Wells in April of last year. What does it say? The sample was saturated with... I can't even pronounce it. But it can cause illness and incapacitation. I found that among her effects. It's a fake. Looks genuine to me, Leo. Easy enough to check. One legitimate motive and two unsupported alibis. I am not going to listen to this. She found out what you were doing. You both pleaded with her. You asked her to meet you after the party. No. You're the lady who would stick pins in a photograph, and Monica was a threat. I never went back there. Then who did? I don't know. Maybe Leo. But you were with Leo. Not all the time. He went out for a, a while. That's all I wanted to know. What are you doing to me? Well, you did. You said you couldn't sleep. You wanted to take a walk. How long was he gone, Karen? I don't remember. 20 minutes? An hour? No alibi, Leo. And a motive. Hey, 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 this is crazy. Don't tell me anything if you believe this. All right, I took a walk. Is that some kind of crime? And what about her? If I don't have an alibi, neither does she. That doesn't matter, Leo. Why the hell doesn't it? Because Monica was killed downstairs. Her murder had to carry her up here. As we all saw, Karen couldn't even move that chair. I'm getting out of here. Nobody's going to hang this on me. You killed her. She killed herself. Her whole life ahead of her, and you killed her. Alex, take it easy. Come back here, Leo. Nobody's going to railroad me. I'm warning you. Listen to it, Leo. I've done enough listening. <laughs> Lights, Lloyd. What is this? What's going on? Where'd you get the flashlight, Frank? What? The flashlight, where'd you get it? Oh, uh, right there, in the drawer. How did you know it was there? Oh, I didn't. I was uh, just looking, you know, for matches. Monica didn't smoke. I made that clear. Why would she keep matches in her bedroom? What the hell is this? Why did you open that particular drawer? It was dark. I opened up a lot of drawers. No, you didn't. Try them. I 
had every drawer sealed, all except one. That's the one you opened. So what? What difference does it make? You went to that drawer because you knew you'd find a flashlight. What's he talking about? How would I know that? You saw it the night you killed Monica, when you took out the piece of stationery for a suicide note? You're out of your mind. Nobody else knew there was a flashlight in there. She just bought it that morning. He could have been in her room. He carried her upstairs. You said so yourself. He doesn't get it yet. Get what? Leo wasn't there at all. After the party, he went home. To his two children. What? The nearest he got to medical school was playing a male nurse off-Broadway. Not one of my better parts. But you said... We all said a lot of things. None of them were true. You had motives. Afraid not. You, you wanted her out of the way. You mean Grandma's homemade tea? No such concoction. It was just part of the script. Script? Now listen closely, Frank. Nothing here today was real. Nothing. The scenes we played, the arguments, they all came out of my typewriter with a little improvisation from my friends. I thought we were terrific. This is crazy. As for motives, we invented them. Karen and Leo never had an affair. Missed opportunity, Leo. Catch me when my kids are grown. David and Monica were close friends, and her relationship with Lloyd was strictly professional. And I never put my own money in a play. Oh, I almost forgot. Here's your lighter bat. You kept it. Wouldn't do for you to have a lighter in your pocket, Frank. You might not have gone for the flashlight. This whole thing was staged? For an audience of one. A gun. Blanks. And the audition, hiring me to play a cop. Just an excuse to get you here. We had to make you a participant. We even recreated her bedroom so you'd be back where you were a year ago. And then we arranged for the lights to go out. How'd you know about Monica and me? Well, I didn't at first. But it was obvious she was expecting someone that night. Why me? Out of all the people in New York, why me? In her dressing room, she asked me if I could stop someone from working. I thought that was a strange thing to say. Then later, she was counting money. A thousand dollars. So? It suddenly occurred to me it might be blackmail money. Maybe she was paying someone off. But that doesn't explain... A thousand isn't much. Who would she think she could buy for that kind of money? And who could Alex Dennison, a successful playwright, keep from working? An actor, naturally. If there was a blackmailer, and he was coming for a payoff, he'd probably wait outside until our party was over. And it was raining that night. <sighs> Alex remembered there was a cab parked across the street with the off-duty sign on. I was complaining about it. I also remember the day Monica ran out of here during previews. She took a cab home. And we all know the cliché about out-of-work actors driving taxis. In fact, Mr. Heller, you yourself had said that you had driven one for a while. Every cab company keeps records of pickups and deliveries. It seems a Frank Heller took a fare from here to Monica's townhouse the afternoon of our fight. He also had his cab out the night of the murder with no recorded fares. Well, why didn't you go to the police? With what? Suspicions? No. We had to prove that you were in her bedroom that night. And since we're all creatures of the theater... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You decided to do a number on me. You were good. You're all very good. What happened that night, Frank? 
That's right. Without me, you don't have a third act, do you? <laughs> it was raining. I was parked across the street, waiting for all of you to go home. The party broke up early. Some of the guests even tried to get me to take them in my cab in the rain. I was rather tense. I'd been drinking. I was going crazy sitting in that cab. Finally, she let the caterers go home. I walked across the street. I knocked. She was expecting me. Hi. Not even a hello? Come with me. How to reviews? You don't give a damn about the reviews. Okay. No polite conversation. You want to talk business? We'll talk business. But you were a lot friendly the last time I was here. This isn't the last time. Now, listen, Frank, I was very angry with Alex, and he opened up a lot of emotions in me that I guess I didn't know I had, and I wanted to punish him. So when I got in your cab the other day... I couldn't believe it. Monica Wells coming on to me, inviting me in for a drink. I was using you, just playing my old seduction game. Well, I came to my senses. I asked you to leave. Nothing happened. But he doesn't know that. We spent hours together. You even missed a performance. You really think that he's going to believe that I would pick up a cab driver and let him make love to me? Maybe, maybe not. But I'm betting you'd rather pay a few bucks and just forget the whole thing. Nuisance value. Call it whatever you like. Look, I don't enjoy doing this, but I've been an actor for 15 years and I'm driving a cab. No, I need a steak. I need something to get me moving. So I read in the paper this morning... When Alex and I were getting married. Well, I figured he was a lucky man, so why shouldn't I be lucky, too? Now, listen to me, Frank. I got you into this, and I do owe you something, so... If you just forget the whole thing, I promise you I will never mention your name to anyone. Sorry. I was going to pay you. I actually went to the bank this morning and I took out a thousand dollars. Hey, hey, we're talking about a lot more money than that. It doesn't matter, Frank, because you're not getting into the money. Oh? I decided this evening that even if you call this whole thing off, I was going to tell Alex the truth. Hey, hey, that's not very smart, you know, especially right before the wedding. The time I was honest with him. As you said, maybe he'll forgive me. Maybe he won't, but either way, he's never going to forgive a blackmailer. Now, wait. I wouldn't be in your shoes, Frank. He's got a lot of friends. Hi, Alex. I know it's the middle of the night. Can you come over here right away? Please, it's important. I know I did, but I think I'm... You know what you're doing? I think so. You're just going to ruin it for yourself. Wait and see. You're welcome to just stay around, Frank. I'm sure he'd like to meet you. Don't answer it. Don't answer it. Don't answer it. Don't answer it. Don't. Monica. Monica. Called her name. I tried to revive her. I even felt her pulse. I felt it flicker for like a second, and then it stopped. When I realized she was dead, I didn't know what to do. So you manufactured a suicide? I didn't want a murder investigation. So I wiped the blood in the corner of the bookcase. I picked her up. I carried her upstairs. And I... <sighs> you know the rest.
Look, I've lived with this a long time. I did what I did. But it was an accident. For whatever it's worth, I didn't mean to kill her. Lieutenant. Yes, sir. You heard? I heard. Who's this? Frank, meet the man you impersonated. Lieutenant McElroy. You said... Killed in the line of duty. I believe that was the dialogue delivered, as always, with my well-known credibility. Thanks for coming, Lieutenant. Good thing I did. Looks like I owe you an apology. No, not really. I didn't have any proof. Well, you've made me a convert. You've done our job for us. Uh, I don't look anything like this guy. Had to give you a reason for being here, Frank. One you'd believe. Come along, Mr. Heller. <laughs> if you ever write a play about this, at least I gave you an ending, huh? <laughs> Thank you. All of you. Uh, Alex. I thought it would never work. Yes, especially with me. I was worried about blowing my lines. Oh, I don't know, Walter. I thought you went half bad, particularly for a non-pro. Thank you. You know, the one thing I don't understand is why you went along with it. Heller, you promised him a lot of money and you told him it was a trap for Leo. That made him feel safe. You'd pin it on the wrong man and stop looking. But even so, he knew he killed Monica. Why get involved at all? For one reason, Lloyd. He's an actor. And I was offering him a wonderful part. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Listen, why don't we all go across the street and have a drink? Who's buying? Well, since it's a special occasion. No, no, no. He, he, he's, he's, we're spending his own money. <laughs> Come along. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see you later. <laughs> you know, there just might be a play in all that. Well, why don't we have dinner next week and talk about it? I'm buying you a drink. Now you want dinner? <laughs> you know, if I had it all to do again, I could be a little more convincing in certain areas. I like your... Oh, I agree with you, David. Oh, well, why don't we go to a place across the street and say, well, we're some company. Why don't we Aren't you coming? Save me a place. <laughs>